Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about meiosis in this video and kind of compare it uh, to mitosis as we go. So here, um, this cell represents a diploid cell found in reproductive organs. So when we talk about mitosis versus meiosis, mitosis is going to be what the cell division process that produces your body cells or your somatic cells, whereas meiosis is going to really only happen in the reproductive organs, the ovaries or the testicles, in order to produce sperm and egg. We call this sperm and egg gametes. So sex cells are gametes, um, and meiosis is the process uh, that produces them. So while humans have 46 chromosomes, it'd be very difficult to use that uh, here to teach it, so I'm going to use six. <clears throat> And um, I'm going to make them a little bit curved just to make it easier for the sister chromatids. So this is a diploid cell um, that we're going to start with in interphase. And in G1, the cell lives its life. But if you recall, in S phase, okay, sorry, but before we go into S phase, um, so this cell here is 2N equals 6. If it were a human cell, it would be 2N equals 46. So in this um, cell here, there are two kinds, two of each kind of chromosome. So I've highlighted in there for you. Uh, you can kind of tell that I tried to like match the lines to show like different genes and uh, homologous chromosomes here. So we have two of every kind of chromosome. And at the end of meiosis, each gamete should have three chromosomes in it. So if we're starting with six, we're going to cut that number in half. So each gamete has three. Okay, so in S phase, uh, the chromosomes, they go through DNA replication. And so here we have our sister chromatids that are produced. So this is still in interphase of the cell preparing for M. And so G2, it prepares. And now we're finally getting into meiosis. So meiosis has two rounds of division. So this first part is going to be called uh, meiosis 1, and it's called prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1, telophase 1, cytokinesis 1. Then we'll go through meiosis 2, where we'll have prophase 2, metaphase 2, etc. Okay, so here, a lot of the things that make meiosis different from mitosis happens here in prophase 1. So something that is different than mitosis is homologous chromosomes are actually going to pair up and find each other. Now, uh, if you recall from mitosis, there's like spindle fibers moving these, and that's really what's happening. Um, they're not just floating towards each other like I have here. But anyway, so homologous chromosomes are going to pair up uh, and find each other in prophase one. Now, this uh, group, this pairing, is called a tetrad. A uh, tetra means four, and so there's like four sister chromatids in a tetrad. And so, uh, one of the coolest things, though, that happens during prophase one is this process called crossing over. So, in crossing over, the homologous chromosomes will actually like exchange sections of their DNA. So they will actually switch. Now, why this is so incredible and amazing is because now, here, let me draw on this for you. Like if you really think deeply, let's think about this chromosome right here. This is now a new sequence of DNA that has never existed before. So it's a brand, like this too, like it's a brand new uh, combination of genes that has never been seen ever. And so um, I only showed one crossing over event right here, but in reality, they kind of like, um, like, I know that looks like DNA, but they intertwine together. There's actually multiple crossing over events along the two sister chromatids that are like closest to each other. Now they are exchanging like homologous genes. So if the, like let's pretend that this gene right here coded for eye color, um, when they exchange, they're exchanging one eye color 
for another eye color gene. It's not exchanging like an eye color for like a dimples. Like they're like um, regions of chromosomes coding for similar traits. So it's like an even exchange. Uh, so crossing over, um, like let's just uh, do this like a quick example real fast. Um, so let's pretend that this person, so this is like a person who's going through meiosis. Let's pretend that her father is Nigerian and her mother is Korean, which in real life I do have a friend <laughs> who I'm describing. So uh, she has these, let's say these blue chromosomes she inherited from her father, uh, her Nigerian father, and these chromosomes she inherited from her Korean mother. But these are both within her. Like she is now making gametes to make offspring. So really like the offspring that's made, these are the DNA from the grandparents in reality. But now as this person goes through meiosis, her, her like mainly Nigerian chromosome right here now has a new section of DNA that has Korean ancestry. So here you have this new combination of genes uh, that could end up in the offspring. And that's a new combination that has never existed before. So um, sorry, I kind of spent too long on crossing over, but I do think it is absolutely beautiful at creating variation in our offspring. So now we're still in prophase one here. Notice the recombinant chromosomes. So like this right here, this little cro uh, result of crossing over, we call this recombinant chromosomes. Um, they've recombined. Okay, so uh, now we're moving into metaphase one. And this is where these pairs, these homologous pairs are going to move to the middle of the cell. So the homologous pairs move to the middle of the cell. Uh, like this. This does not happen in mitosis. In mitosis, we would have had um, like six individual uh, chromosomes along the middle there, right? We would have had like one, two, three, four, five, six, like lined up down the middle if it was mitosis instead of pairs. Now, I also want to point out that right here, um, how these chromosomes lined up down the metaphase plate so like this is the center of the cell now event oh goodness sorry so eventually the three on this side are going to get pulled here and the three over here will get pulled in this direction now one thing i want to point out though if you look this side has a lot of like nigerian dna and this side has a lot more like korean dna so in reality um it was kind of random how these chromosomes moved and the uh, combination. So it very easily, like this blue chromosome here could have been on this side and this orange one could have been on this side and then you'd get different combinations. So in humans, we have 23 pairs line up along the middle of the cell and there's 8 million different possibilities of how they line up along the middle of the cell. Like, are you gonna have a paternal chromosome or a maternal chromosome on each side? Like, which way will they end up? So independent assortment is another source of variation and it comes at this step here of how they line up along the middle of the cell. So then, once we have these homologous chromosomes in pairs though, we go through anaphase one, where it's the homologous pairs are gonna actually get separated to opposite sides of the cell. This does not happen in mitosis. Um, in mitosis, there are no pairs. So then we move into uh, telophase one and cytokinesis. So at the end of meiosis one, uh, we end up with two cells. Now, these cells are both haploid. Remember, we started with six chromosomes. There's only one, two, three, and over here, one, two, three. So we technically have haploid cells. They have one of each kind of chromosome. Like look at this one with the two lines at the top. They have one of each kind. So why do we need to divide again? Why do we need mitosis, I'm sorry, meiosis number two? Well, because these chromosomes are duplicated, because these chromosomes still have twice as much DNA. So even though they're haploid, 
with um, only three chromosomes in each cell, they have their sister chromatids, they're like still sister chromatids attached. So we need to divide again and go through a second round of division. So I'm not really showing prophase two. Um, basically, it's the same, like the nuclear envelope breaks down. Uh, and then we move into metaphase two, where the chromosomes are gonna move to the middle of the cell. So basically, up here, we're looking at meiosis 2. This part is very similar to mitosis. You'll see here the sister chromatids and anaphase 2 get pulled apart to opposite sides of the cell. And then you're going to have your telophase 2 and cytokinesis, where we end up with four genetically different haploid cells. So remember, we started with um, 2N. Oops. 2n equals 6. And now look, each of these cells have 3. And if you really look at them, they're all different. We get four genetically different haploid cells at the end. And the reason they're different is because of that crossing over, creating recombinant chromosomes, but also the way the homologous pairs lined up in the middle of the cell. So, um, for example, here, let me write on this. So if I had like here, um, one option, and then maybe like the homologous pairs, but very easily couldn't have been where maybe like all of the purple ones are on the left, and then some of, then all of these, like that would create different combinations of chromosomes in the gametes. So that independent assortment is another source of variation. Now, in males, the next step would be to add tails um, and make these cells into sperm. Uh, it goes through spermatogenesis. Now, in females, though, you might be thinking, or maybe you're not, but um, in general, for human females, uh, we go through meiosis once a month to produce an egg. But you just learned that in meiosis, we make four cells for gametes at the end of meiosis. However, when a female gets pregnant, she doesn't have quadruplets every time. And that's because in human females, um, during the meiosis process, one of the cells, like the cytoplasm, doesn't divide equally. And basically one of the cells hogs all of the cytoplasm and we're left with one egg or one ovum and three polar bodies. And the three polar bodies will actually disintegrate and the parts will get reused. So we get one egg at the end of meiosis and um, three polar bodies. So this is just a visual to kind of show that unequal division of the cytoplasm uh, to make that one mature egg. All right, I think that's the end of my discussion on meiosis. So great job.